Hey everyone, Jake with 8020 Automotive and Boost Disablers here. We are launching our new Boost DFM Disabler that works on the Global B 5.3 liter and 6.2 liter Ecotec 3 engines. And so to celebrate the launch of this product, I'm gonna be covering today everything about dynamic fuel management. So dynamic fuel management is a fuel saving technology that GM claims can save you anywhere from five to 15% in fuel. So it increases your fuel economy, but it does so at the expense of your engine and your engine's reliability. These systems have been causing a ton of problems on GM's vehicles since they released it all the way back in 2005. And the DFM system takes things even a little bit further and is, in my opinion, more problematic than the AFM system that was previously used. So in this video, we're first gonna go ahead and talk about DFM. I'll talk a little bit about the differences between DFM and AFM, and then I'll talk about the problems that this system causes. And then from there, we'll go ahead and jump into our boost devices, which we offer two devices for GM vehicles to disable active and dynamic fuel management. So in 2019, GM launched dynamic fuel management in the 5.3 liter and 6.2 liter Ecotec 3 engines, which are the engines predominantly used in your Silverado, Sierra, Suburban, Yukon, Tahoe, etc. All of the other GM vehicles that have fuel management technology, even still today, still use the previous AFM technology. It's just the 5.3 liter and 6.2 liter engines from 2019 onwards that got the upgrade to dynamic fuel management. Active fuel management, or AFM, was the system that would take your engine and go from V8 mode to V4 mode. You only had two settings. It was full power or half power. Only four cylinders actually had the specialized AFM lifters in it. And so there were only four specific cylinders that could be deactivated. Well, with the switch to dynamic fuel management, GM went ahead and uses the specialized lifters on all eight of the cylinders. And any one of those eight cylinders can be deactivated. In addition to that, there are over 17 different firing combinations combinations that can occur and your engine can run on as few as two cylinders at a time and in zero throttle coasting or engine braking situations it can even go into a zero cylinder mode. So we now have a system where rather than just V8 or V4 you can be in V2, V3, V4, 5, 6, 7, etc. The cylinders are all firing in very different combinations and on top of that GM went ahead and doubled down on the DFM technology and increased the amount of time that it's actually in use. On AFM engines, in a study that GM themselves did, active fuel management was enabled 52% of the time while driving. The new DFM technology has increased that to 60% of the time. So on these V8 trucks with DFM, you're only getting full V8 mode 40% of the time. So when we go ahead and look at all of this from a high level standpoint, it makes sense that these engines are having a lot of problems with these systems. These systems are shutting off cylinders 60% of the time and shutting them off in a very wide ranging cylinder configuration. It doesn't take a genius or an engineer to understand that turning cylinders off and back on extremely frequently is ultimately going to lead to some reliability issues. That's one of the big reasons that on these newer trucks and even the older GM trucks, you start to get a little bit scared about whether they can make it to 200 plus thousand miles. And that just isn't something that you should even ever have to worry about in a naturally aspirated V8. So all of that to say that these systems are problematic. And so let's talk just briefly about the problems that they create. First off and most notable Notably, it can lead to lifter failure. These systems use very specialized lifters, and because the lifters are predominantly what control the cylinders being turned on and off, the lifters themselves are being turned on and off, which ultimately eventually leads to lifter failure. Lifter failure is of course not a cheap thing to fix. In addition to lifter failure, it's also common to have complete or catastrophic engine failure, and that's predominantly caused because the 
DFM technology increases oil usage and then we take all of these newer trucks that are being produced and GM has their intelligent oil life monitoring on it where it can let you go 7,500 plus miles without an oil change. When we take these extended oil change intervals and factor in extra oil use, it's very common to lead to oil starvation and oil starvation is one of the common causes that ultimately ends up in catastrophic engine failure. And that is a little bit more extreme than just lifter failure, but it is something that is also happening, especially on these newer vehicles with DFM. And then in addition to that, you get a number of of performance and just kind of general driving related issues. You get a lot of hesitant acceleration and that's because your truck might be in two cylinder mode. You put your foot down on the floor. Well, now it has to kick back into eight cylinder mode before it can start to accelerate. You get a lot of acceleration issues, kind of jerky hesitation. You get decreased throttle response because of that. And overall, it just doesn't give you a very smooth driving experience. A lot of people can tell when the engine's cutting off into a different cylinder configuration and it's very noticeable to see that kind of lag effect that you get when you do put your foot down on the floor. So outside of just reliability related issues, these systems just aren't the most fun or the smoothest driving experience either. For all of these reasons, it is extremely common to disable or delete the whole DFM system. With that, let's go ahead and talk about now disabling versus deleting it. So the only 100% guaranteed way of not experiencing lifter failure or any of the issues related to DFM is to completely delete the system. But deleting the system requires new lifters, you need a new camshaft, you have to completely tune it out, and you have to replace a number of gaskets, you need block off plugs, a number of seals. Ultimately, it is expensive in parts, but it's also mostly expensive in labor to do it because you have to crack into the engine and there's a ton of things that need to be replaced to fully delete the system. You're looking easily at 2,500 or 3,000 plus dollars to fully delete it. And if you do run into lifter failure down the road, you're gonna have to go in and replace those lifters and replace those other parts anyways. So even though yes, we sell a product that disables it, my honest recommendation is to not go through the full delete until you run into lifter failure because ultimately you're gonna end up spending thousands of dollars up front to protect yourself from an issue that with a disabler might not even happen. And so you can spend $150 and significantly reduce the likelihood of experiencing lift or failure. And if you end up do having it, it's gonna cost you the same as it would cost to go ahead and delete the system completely up front. Although I do understand that that gives you good peace of mind and it just gets rid of these systems that to be honest, none of us want on our trucks anyways. So with dynamic fuel management under our boost disabler company, we offer two different devices for DFM enabled vehicles. The first one is our blue device that's currently on market. It deactivates both active fuel management and dynamic fuel management. This works all the way up until the 2022 and a half models, which are known as the Global A trucks, with the one caveat that this does not work on trucks that use a 10-speed transmission. So if you have a 10-speed transmission, unfortunately, this device does not work for it. And also, unfortunately, our new device doesn't either. The primary difference between these two devices was GM's switch from their Global A to Global B platform. And that is the communication platform that these engines operate on. And so they completely revamped the communication structure of the engines and they added some serious encryption to it, which makes it very difficult to communicate with the engines through the OBD port. This device, we went ahead and found a workaround to be able to disable the DFM system via the OBD port, but it does come with a few considerations. From a fitment standpoint, there are a few other things here that this doesn't fit. And so we'll go ahead and throw a fitment chart up on the screen right here. So before you look at our new DFM device, please make sure it fits your vehicle because there were some more communication changes that took place in 2025. And so this device does not currently work on every single new vehicle being produced. So let's go ahead and talk about our new DFM device. Like I mentioned, these new Global B vehicles are extremely difficult to communicate with through the OBD port, but 
This is an OBD plugin. There are some caveats that come with that. Certain conditions have to be met for this device to actually start working and fully disable DFM. Now, the good news is once this device kicks in and starts working, which can take five minutes or so, it works 100% of the time. And so it does not allow the truck to go into zero cylinder mode under zero throttle or engine braking conditions. To give you guys an example here, we've done a number of live tests in our 2023 Silverado. From my house to our office here, it's about a 12 minute drive without any device plugged in the Silverado experiences 4,500 to 5,000 deactivations per cylinder. So when you take that number, it really puts things into perspective at how frequently the system is kicking in. With this disabler plugged in, in our live testing, we've seen anywhere from 200 to 600 deactivation events occurring per cylinder. So it still does allow the DFM system to operate. It just significantly reduces how frequently DFM kicks in. And again, once it kicks in, it kicks in 100%. And so on those drives, if I continued driving for an hour long, we would never see any more than those initial 200 to 600 deactivations. So on longer drives, this device will deactivate the system 98% of the time. The one benefit to that that I will say is it alleviates any concerns that you might have with fully disabling the system and then you know leaving it disabled for six months but then unplugging this device and having the dfm system kick back in and you know potentially run into issues with having old sticky oil or other issues that happen from just not exercising the system on a frequent basis this device will allow the dfm system to work every single time you drive your truck and so we still are properly oiling and exercising those components which will lead to less issues with them over time while still significantly reducing the likelihood of lift or failure by reducing total deactivations by 95 plus percent while you're driving. Just a few other notes on this. This device, we were able to significantly reduce the amount of power that it uses while the vehicle's not turned on. Our blue AFM slash DFM device has the lowest power draw on the market. And this device, we were able to even reduce that power draw by more than 50%. And so it's significantly unlikely to run into any battery issues while using this. It's simple plug and play, plugs right into the OBD port. And like I mentioned, after just a few minutes of driving, it kicks in 100% of the time and will keep you in V8 mode, significantly reducing the amount of deactivation events that occur every time you drive it. We just launched this. We have it available on our website for sale as well as on Amazon via Prime. So head on over to our website site or to Amazon to pick up your new DFM disabler today. All right, so that wraps it up with our video on dynamic fuel management. We're super excited to have our new DFM disabler on market. Thank you for watching this video. Please go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned to our channel.